At Deaf West, we have a team of people involved in all levels in the process to make sure that Deaf peers are recognized equally and as are their perspectives and discussions. That way the actors don't have to waste their time on advocating for themselves. We want the actors to focus on their roles, not on politics or issues that arise or come up during rehearsals and in production. Once again, first and foremost, access is imperative. An interpreter needs to be hired anytime we have deaf actors in the room. We also have an ASL master, and their job is to translate the English script into ASL. They also function as the deaf eye in the room, and they're watching to see if the translation is accurate or not. They then have a discussion with the director to see about uh, what the placement should be. It's a very collaborative environment. However, at the same time, we still respect one another's roles, and there are several roles throughout the production. There are not the same people throughout all of the shows. However, there are those who've experienced the interpreters and uh, ASL masters. To quote, we usually have the same group experience, so we know how to navigate through situations with the end goal being the same. We've learned a lot about the process along the way. We always start the process from scratch. So for instance, the choreographer's vision, we certainly do not want them to feel limited, such as, oh, the deaf actor can't do this. No, really, we can do anything. We just need their vision and concept to figure out the solutions, such as how to cue with the actors. We'll, we'll work on that later instead of getting caught up in, oh, we can't do this, we can't do that. And we shift their mind, mindset to continue on with the visualization process from there. If something can't or doesn't work, then we simply modify and continue on with the process. The other answer is fairly simple. A lot of hard work and rehearsals over and over again that helps us to achieve our effective goal. Again, we always allow the material to speak for itself when we read the script to figure out what will work. We know that we need to make the show accessible to both deaf and hearing audiences. We must take into consideration Yes, there might be a voice actor off to the side of the stage. Should it be with a deaf actor on stage? Should they shadow together? There's a variety of ways to do this, and we want to serve the story and have an impact to enhance the themes in the character's growth through dual casting, which is deaf and hearing together. Really, there are no rules. Be open to starting the process in terms of meeting the director, discussing the vision, going through the characters both deaf and hearing, and how to incorporate all of it. And it's during this process that we usually have our discoveries. We at Deaf West have been doing theatre for 25 years now, and we've learned a lot from previous experiences, patterns, and the process. We've made many, many mistakes over the years too, and that's all part of our learning, which we're still very much engaged in. We'd like to find more opportunities going forward, we must continue with making changes and we can't repeat the same mistakes over and over again if we want to evolve for the future. Just one rule, everything must be accessible. <laughs> Varies, again. No rules. Just look at the story and find the best material and discover through the process. Always have American Sign Language and captions, always. The best way to introduce our language and our culture to the world is when we have hearing people come into the theater. They learn so much about our people, deaf people in general. In two hours, they get it. They are enlightened by the experience and they're starting to have a real appreciation and understanding of who we are as deaf people. And that's our motivation behind what we do. Second of all, we just want to make good theatre. Not just good sign language theatre, but good theatre. That's it. I think those two are the most important pieces of information. Our mission is to build a relationship between deaf and hearing worlds, and we feel that theatre is a very powerful tool. We want to maintain and continue the work for years to come. As for me, the best answer is to lead by example. We put our show on stage, 
the audiences and other theater companies come and watch and they understand how we do it. Because if it's written on paper, it's hard to see or even explain. Once they experience it and see it and understand it visually, they can learn from the performers. We don't have a quote-unquote secret sauce. My, my point is, Deaf West has been led by Deaf leadership, and in turn, Deaf actors have felt safe and comfortable. Quite often, hearing theater companies would hire a Deaf performer. Sometimes the Deaf actor would feel isolated or left out, or ex had experiences of oppression. My heart goes out to them and I sympathize with the deaf actors. I often tell hearing theater companies they should hire a consultant or an ASL master and interpreters to make sure the deaf actor feels safe and equal in a hearing theater environment. Number one is access. Provide interpreters and support services. Deaf actors should not have to advocate for themselves. They should be focused on their work and performance while also being part of a team in that environment and part of the process. I always encourage hearing theater to hire deaf people with experience from other theaters to be a part of their process because they already bring that awareness and knowledge to the room. The process is really very simple. It includes respect, understanding, having an open heart, an open mind, and with these things you can achieve your end result.